iPad users can now require Face ID to open an app, can now customize and control where and how apps and widgets appear in both orientations, can now take far more useful and aesthetic looking notes, can now run shortcuts straight out of Control Center, can now schedule text messages to send later, can now game for hours with consistently high frame rates, can now solve handwritten expressions in line, and can even paste typed text as personalized handwriting. Those are just some of iPad OS 18's new features, and today I wanna to give you my no fluff guide to turning the iPad into your iPad. Very quickly before we get started, I wanna let you know there's still time to pre-order my new course, Pro iPhone Video Essentials, which will show you how to shoot not just high quality iPhone videos, but videos that actually stand out from a creative perspective. Pre-order today and you'll also get my Learning to be Productive and Freeform Unleashed courses for free. This is a limited time deal linked up down in the description. So let's talk a little bit about Smart Script. As you can see, Apple can now straighten out and smooth in handwritten script. Why should you care? Well, it comes down to one word, speed. Have you ever wanted to do more handwriting on your iPad, but you felt like it was kind of a deal breaker because you had to go slow enough that things remained legible? Well, Smart Script isn't just a cool feature. The benefit here is that you can write faster and let the iPad worry about keeping things neater. And by now, you might also know that it's possible to insert some additional space in between your handwritten text as well. But something I haven't yet seen anyone else cover yet is the ability to copy text and then paste it into your handwritten notes in a style that matches which is obviously very useful if you're in handwriting mode and you need to copy something and you don't wanna do it by hand. To get this to work, you need to have a decent amount of handwriting already written down inside a note. Then you can hold the Apple Pencil down, get that paste option and let the local AI model replicate your handwriting. Another great new feature is called live audio transcription in Apple Notes. And if you go up and tap on the paper clip to attach stuff, you can see record audio is there and if you tap on that and start recording, what's gonna happen is you're gonna capture not only the waveform, the actual audio itself, but if you tap on the top right, you're also going to see an actual live transcription of the words that you're speaking. If you've ever found yourself either sitting in a class or a meeting where you wanna take notes, but you don't wanna to have to do it manually, and you wanna be able to search through those notes later, then this is the perfect feature for you. And not only can you record that live audio and have it transcribed, you can also place it next to other notes elements, including things like your lists. Another great and much needed new addition to Apple Notes is the ability to highlight text in different colors to make it stand out. This is as easy as highlighting some text, going up to the formatting options, and then picking the color that you wanna use. Previously in Apple Notes, basically all the text looked very similar and it was hard to create a visual hierarchy. Well, being able to highlight text in different colors is gonna make it easier to prioritize information and make things stand out. And a good potential tip here might be to come up with a system for yourself that consistently uses colors for specific things like orange might be for highlights, pink for definitions, green for important concepts, etc. Another key addition to Apple Notes is collapsible headers. So you can see I've got an arrow here that lets me toggle whether or not a section is visible. So if you're somebody that often works with lengthy notes and you wanna be able to better concentrate on specific information, then being able to expand or collapse sections on demand will make your life a lot easier. Additionally, you can easily move big chunks of text around your document by collapsing a section, highlighting it, cutting it, and then pasting it elsewhere, just like this. Now let's talk about the Files app because there's some great additions here. One key addition for anybody who uses an external drive is the ability to format an external drive now without needing a Mac in the mix. So I can long press on that external drive and say erase, and then it gives me this new option to choose how this is formatted. Another handy little feature is for those of you that have ever been without internet access and didn't have a synced file that you needed on your local device. So here I'm looking at one of the free wallpapers that you can find on my wallpaper store, and I'm gonna go ahead and long press on that and say, keep downloaded. So that'll go ahead and download it. And then no matter what happens, I'll always have that available. It's not gonna try to offload it to save storage, or if I get disconnected from the internet, I'll still have it available. So I think that travelers in particular who need their critical files with them wherever they go are gonna find this especially useful. Speaking of especially useful, one iPad tip I'm always happy to give 
is to get yourself a paper-like screen protector. This is the original paper feel screen protector, the one that started it all. Put simply, it does what it sounds like. It helps you write and draw on your iPad as if it were a piece of paper. Additionally, if you've ever struggled with glare on your iPad screen, Paperlike's NanoDots technology maintains optimal picture quality while minimizing refractions. If you don't have a Paperlike screen protector, you can see that the glare gets pretty bad. With the Paperlike screen protector, you don't have to worry about glare or fingerprints. If you wanna take neater notes or draw with more accuracy by bringing the comfort and precision of paper to your digital workflow, then join the millions of creators and doers globally already using Paperlike, including myself, to make your work the best. So click on the link down in the description to check it out. Now, as you're gazing upon this great new wallpaper that's available in the wallpaper store linked up down below, you'll notice that I've got some icons arranged here in a new way that hasn't been available before. And if I pick this up and change the orientation, you'll notice that you can actually customize where apps and widgets appear on your home screen in two different layouts, both vertical and horizontal. So if you've ever wanted to rearrange app icons to be a little closer to your thumb for easier reach, or to just not cover up important things in a photo, you can easily move those around now. And while that's purely aesthetic, something that's maybe even more powerful is the ability to completely customize what shows up in your control center. So you can come in and actually delete everything that's here if you want to, and you can change how big or small different components actually appear here, which is nice. But if you go to add a control and search for shortcuts, now you can install a shortcut right in your control center, which means you don't have to mess around with cluttering up your actual desktop with your shortcuts widget. So if you've ever found yourself wanting larger tap targets in control center, or if you wanna declutter things and you just wanna see only the things that you care about, then the new control center customizations aren't just cool, they can actually increase your efficiency and reduce distractions. Safari for iPadOS got some great updates. Here I am on a great website, it's iPhone Ness, and I check it frequently, but I hate all the distractions. If I tap on the reader icon, I can say hide distracting items, and then I can go ahead and hide this pop-up on the bottom, or hide the sidebar with this ad. I can hide the ad up top as well. Have you ever found yourself distracted when you go online to do some research? Well, this particular feature could be a big boon for improving focus. So now not only does this look a lot better as I'm browsing, but if I go to take a screenshot, it's gonna be ad free. Of course, one of the other great features in Safari is the ability to just get a summary of an article without even having to read the whole thing. So here, for example, I can save some time and see if this is even the right article to be reading if I'm curious about whether or not machines can think and I can see, oh yeah, this is gonna be helpful and then I can go ahead and jump into the article. But something else that's really great with Safari is the ability to listen to a page, have it read to you. So that's this button right here, listen to page. And if you tap on that, then you can actually enhance your workflow in really interesting ways. This isn't just for accessibility. Imagine you're commuting and you wanna to listen to an article, now you can do that very easily. Or you could listen to an article while you take some notes. And something to note here is that you also get some controls over how things are played. So if you wanna speed up or slow down the pace, you can easily do that. But I think as you put this into practice, you'll realize that sometimes it's nice to be able to absorb information without necessarily having to stare at the screen. For the first time ever, Apple's brought an official calculator app to the iPad. That's a big deal, and I mean, literally, it's a big deal because it's huge on your iPad screen, but that's okay. This button down in the left will let you switch between the different modes, your basic calculator, a scientific calculator, and a math notes version, which you saw me using a little bit earlier, which, by the way, these math notes are gonna appear inside your actual Apple Notes app, just like you see here. So when it says math notes, it means math notes. In the past, have you ever been frustrated with your iPad when you needed a calculator and you had to reach for your phone or maybe your Apple Watch? Well, now the calculator's here on the iPad, but it doesn't just live in the calculator app. If I go to messages and I type in a currency conversion that I wanna do, I say $50 equals, and you can see it will convert that to euros in this case. Or maybe I can change that around and then I can go ahead and just send that in a message. So it works in Apple Notes or basically anywhere where you can type. Apple's Freeform app got a crucial update you definitely don't wanna skip. Here I am in a Freeform board, and there's a new icon, this star icon down in the bottom left. If you tap on that and tap on the menu, it lets you add a scene. A scene is like a navigation item within your board. So if I swipe over to a different section of my board, go to my scenes and tap on the scene I just made, it'll take me back to that scene. And this also works for zooming in to specific parts of your board. So if I add this scene on that zoom, 
and then go back and forth between the two, you can see that that's a handy way to get around inside your boards. Now, as you can see, scenes are very easy to set up. They take almost no time at all, but you can go about systematizing scenes as well. As you can see here, I sort of created my own note card look with these lines using the ruler tool, grouped them together and duplicated them a bunch of times, and then went through and zoomed into each and created a scene. And then I can just duplicate that board anytime that I wanna use that template, basically. And then all I need to do is fill in what goes into each scene and it makes for a pretty cool system. As you can see, I get pretty into Freeform. If you wanna dive deeper into what Freeform can do, I do have a course on it, which you can get for free right now when you pre-order my new course, Pro iPhone Video Essentials, linked up below. Remind me in 10 minutes to drink some nitro coffee. I've been using my Apple Watch to create reminders for a really long time. And all these years, those reminders have been showing up inside the Reminders app only. But now, as you can see, reminders and calendars sync up a little bit. And as you can see, that reminder I just made to drink some nitro coffee appears inside my calendar. And not only does it appear, but I can mark it as done right from within the app as well. So if you've ever felt like some of your to-dos have been slipping through the cracks and you didn't wanna pay for a separate app that's gonna combine everything for you, now you can use Apple's free tools for the same effect. So that's it for today's video, straight to the point, fluff free. That's the way things are going around here. If you like that style, make sure you get subscribed, check out the courses, check out the wallpapers, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.